Hi everyone, Materium here again with another narrative battle report. This one is a special battle as it has the forces of the Empire taking on the combined might of the Dwarves of Clan Odhind and the Vampire Counts in a 5,000 point pitched battle. So let's go ahead and get into it. The sounds of Dwarves at work filled the night. The Odhind had set up their main camp near the captured watchtower of Lawningbrook and were busily preparing for the assault on the city itself. The figure watching them knew that this, in this heightened state of alertness there was no way for him to gain access to the camp by stealth, so he didn't even try. Stepping out from the darkness at the edge of their camp, Julian the Houndsmaster, servant of Lord Alessandro Mounthaven, made himself known to the Dwarven guards. He had been sent here to initiate the next, next step in his master's plans, and must speak to the Dwarf King. Halt, Imperial! The Dwarven guards called. With a smile, Julian complied, and spoke to the guards in their own tongue. Certainly, noble Dawi, though I am not of the Empire, I am Julian the Houndsmaster, voice of the Lord Alessandro Mounthaven come to bring a missive to the king, Agram Grudgehammer, of the noble Odhine clan. The dwarf guards seemed mildly impressed at Julian's correct usage of their tongue and the protocol of greeting. They escorted the houndsmaster into the camp. Word was sent to the Dawi king, who deigned to meet the envoy in his command tent. The dwarf king looked sternly at the envoy. Speak quickly, human. We have much work to do. I am hardly human, your majesty, said Julian, as he revealed his fangs to the king, who to his credit showed no fear to the vampire. But I will indeed speak quickly. My lord Alessandro Mounthaven has awoken to find the lands that he has sworn to protect in danger. Many forces move to claim his lands unjustly, and to inflict hurts upon those he would see as his duty to protect. Your cousins, the Hammerfells, for example? The Dwarf King's eyes narrowed. The Hammerfells bend no knee to your Lord Mount Haven. Indeed not, good King. But they have long dwelt within my Lord's lands honorably, and of such have gained my Lord's respect. As such they would have the protections that any worthy ally should deserve. The Dwarf King nodded, his scowl deepening as the vampire's words reminded him again of the injustice of the Imperial Force's attack on his clan. The force you face tomorrow not only seek to bar your way to aiding your most noble kinsmen, but have supported those who would have intruded on the lands my master protects. He has sent me, his lowly servant, to ask that his forces be allowed to aid you in the attack on Longingsbrook. Such an attack would not only remind the Empire of their greater allegiance to you, but would show that my lord will not stand by while the peoples of the lands he protects are preyed upon by outsiders. Agram looked at the vampire for a long span of moments. He had never met one of these creatures before, and this was certainly not what he had expected. But his words of duty and honor appealed to the Dwarf King, and his scouts had told him that the forces of Lawningbrook outnumbered his two to one. "'Very well, creature. Tell your lord he may join us in battle on the morrow, but that if he plans treachery against us, the Odhine will repay it in kind.' I will make your words plain to him, but be assured, my master desires the destruction of Lawningbrook just as much as you do, good King Grudgehammer. Julian was then dismissed to bring word back to his master. Lord Mounthaven would be pleased. Tomorrow dark clouds would descend from the mountains, and they would bring death to the lands of men once more. So here we see the forces of Clan Odhine and those of Lord Mounthaven having picked the most advantageous terrain in their attacks on uh, the city of Lawningsbrook, and forced the forces of the Empire to scramble a hastily constructed defense in order to stop these forces from sacking the town. So we'll go ahead and start with the defenders' forces. On the left we have a uh, large unit of 25 uh, flagellates, Next to that is a steam tank. Behind the steam tank is a unit of 13 inner circle knights. 
with General Nadine, the uh, Grand Master and General of this force, who bears the Rune Fang and the Talisman of Protection. Alongside him is a Wizard Lord bearing the Dispel Scroll and the White Cloak of Ur Ur Ulrich as a level 4 uh, Wizard of the Lore of Fire and a Warrior Priest with the Warrior Bane Sword. Hiding in the forest there, you can barely see them, is excuse me, a uh, small unit of, uh, I believe it's ten archers, and with them is a witch hunter with the gold sigil sword, gambler's armor, and the other trickster's shard. Then barely on the left side of the screen, you can see the Imperial Great Cannon. Next to that is a Captain of the Empire upon an Imperial Pegasus with the Relic Sword, the Armor of Fortune, and the Potion of Foolhardiness. That large unit in front of there is a unit of 50 Halberdiers, and joining them is the Captain of the Empire who serves as the Battle Standard Bearer with the Sword of Striking, Enchanted Shield, and Dawnstone, a Warrior Priest with the Biting Blade, and on either side of that are two 10-man detachments of Free Company. In the very back, there is the first of two mortars that the Imperial forces have. Uh, in front of that is a unit of ten handgunners, a second Imperial cannon, and in the back there is a uh, unit of ten archers that has a uh, wizard lord uh, of the lore of metal. He is level four and has the Book of Asher and the Talisman of Endurance. Then we have the Halfling Hot Pot, which is, uses the stats of an Imperial Mortar. Uh, next to that is another unit of ten handgunners, whose marksman bears the Hawkland Long Rifle. Behind them is a unit of uh, twenty Greatswords, who bear the Razor Standard. In the building there is another unit of ten handgunners, with a marksman who bears the Hawkland Long Rifle. Then on the far end there is a unit of nine knightly order knights uh, with full command and behind them is a unit of four demigriff knights with full command and the war banner. Then on the vampire side starting on the left is Lord Mount Haven's mighty bound screech dragon which uses the statistics for the terror geist. Next to that is a black coach, then a unit of ten dire wolves, which have Julian the Houndmaster leading them. Uh, he is a vampire, level two caster of the lore of vampires, on a night barded nightmare with the sword of might, enchanted shield, uh, dawnstone, and has the uh, vampiric powers of dread knight and quick blood, as well as summon creatures of the night. Behind that unit is Lord Alessandro Mount Haven himself, mounted upon his mighty zombie dragon. He bears the Night Shroud, Opal Amulet, the Iron Curse Icon, and the vampiric powers of Quick Blood and Red Fury, and he is a level 1 caster of the lore of vampires. Next to that is a small unit of 20 zombies with no upgrades. Then we have a unit of 30 skeletal warriors with a musician and standard bearer. In front of them are three crypt horrors uh, with a crypt haunter. Next to that is a unit of 30 crypt ghouls with a crypt ghast. Um, on the hill we have a uh, dwarvish organ gun with the rune of forging and the rune of accuracy. Oh, I'm sorry, that is the dwarven cannon with the rune of forging. Uh, the other side of there is the Dwarven Grudge Thrower with the Rune of Forging, the Rune of Accuracy, and the Rune of Penetrating. In between them is a unit of 30 Longbeards uh, with full command and the Rune of Stoicism. And they have shields. Uh, the large unit there is a unit of 47 Hammerers with full command. And joining that unit is the Dwarf Lord, Agram Grudge Hammer with the Oath Stone and three runes of cleaving and the magnificent armor of Borek Beetlebrow. Uh, also is the Thane BSB Oda Borekson with the Master Rune of Grungi. 
and the Dwarvish Runesmith, Laud Draxon, with the double rune of spell breaking and a great weapon. And finishing up our right side, we have a Gyro Bomber. Next to that is the organ gun that I had misidentified earlier. It has the rune of forging and the rune of accuracy on it. Behind them is a unit of nine black knights with full command. Next to that is a unit of 15 thunderers with shields. And uh, covering the farthest end of the right flank there is a Vargulf. So the attackers managed to win the all-important roll to go first. So we started here on the left flank. I had uh, this Terrorgeist move up within 8 inches of the steam tank. Figured this would be about the best opportunity I have with the Terrorgeist to be able to just scream it off the board. Um, and I used the movement of, the, of Lord Alessandro and the zombie dragon behind it to hope to have some cover. Um, he's got a lot of shooting and I don't want to take a cannonball in the face. Um, and the dire wolves and um, Julian the Houndsmaster moved up as well. The black coach took cover behind the building from his shooting until it can power up. Over here you see the middle pretty much advanced as much as we could, um, being both outside of the general's range and being stubby dwarves it's not really all that much um, but the nice thing is is between these four units here we represent a pretty strong wall that he's gonna have trouble getting around and with 5,000 points on the board um, it's basically gonna force something directly into us um, over here on this side, uh, I basically was stuck. I had to reposition my black knights because they were just stuck behind too much stuff. The grudge throw, or not grudge throw, I'm sorry. The gyro bomber basically flies right up in the front of all his stuff, hoping to draw some fire, or if not, and they leave him alone, he can get way behind there and start dropping bombs on that artillery. And then my uh, Vargulf moves up to the side to get those knights there. Um... So, I end up, uh, during magic, he basically shuts us down, because I've got a level 1 and a level 2 against multiple level 4s. It's not going anywhere. But I did manage to scream and inflict 4 wounds onto the steam tank with the terror guy scream. So I thought that was pretty impressive and, and seemed like a good start for the game. Um... And I think this is showing where he shot with the organ gun and took a couple of men off of that night unit there. Um, it was kind of hard to keep up with some of this. 5,000 points on either side is a lot of points. Um, but yeah, I think that the grudge, th or not the grudge, so the, uh, the organ gun picked off a couple guys there. Uh, his cannon or sorry, the Dwarf player's cannon managed to get just an absolutely perfect shot and uh, bust up one of the two Imperial cannons, which I thought was great, particularly since it's on this side that I have the Terrorgeist and Lord Alessandro on the uh, Zombie Dragon, so I I'm really liking our odds, or at least how first turn turned out. Um, so we go into Empire turn one and we start off with the imperial knights here and the there's a level four mage of i must have forgot to talk about it but there's a level four mage in here and i don't remember what she's is of and you'll see why in a moment but they failed a charge into the uh vargulf and have left themselves very undefended right there in the middle of nowhere um the vigilates however made a great charge into the front of the shriek dragon or Terrorgeist, as most of you would recognize it as. So, uh, there's going to be some fighting there, and they're all unbreakable, so I realize I'm going to have to just beat them down to a man. And I'm not entirely sure... This is the first time I've ever fielded a Terrorgeist, so I really just don't know how it's going to work out. I'm, I'm not familiar with them enough. Uh, and then, mainly, the Empire player is starting to get a little choked up by his own units at this point. Um... The uh, 
Steam Cannon generated three points, but he wanted to save them all for shoot the, the cannon. So he didn't move at all. So now his uh, big bus of knights there had to reform and like slowly start coming around the side of the steam tank. So it's going to be at least a couple of turns before they can position themselves to get towards anything. And then his whole center came up basically just as a solid line. Um, he knows he's got to keep that line pretty strong to, to go up against ours, or we're going to start sneaking stuff around the sides. And one flank charge could just start a chain reaction in this game that he, he just can't afford. So over here, uh, the Dwarf Slayer is actually standing in for his uh, Wizard Lord of Life as the Empire player left behind one of his units that had some of his mages in it and uh, just forgot to bring it. So he broke him out of these archers uh, in the back behind the, the war machines so that he could get close enough to attempt to regrow the steam tank. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to be troublesome. And over here, he moves up the Pegasus uh, captain behind the building so that he uh, isn't going to get shot by, by the dwarves cannons. But I think he's made a mistake here because what he didn't realize at the time is that he put him into the front arc of visibility of Lord Alessandro on the zombie dragon. And it's a pr relatively easy charge at this range. And then his cannon returns the favor and, during shooting, blows up our cannon. Um, during magic, he did succeed in erasing all of the wounds off of the steam tank. Um, so that pretty much wasted the first turn of the uh, Terrorgeist, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Um, and then he blew one of our cannons off the table. So this means that our side has no cannons whatsoever now. Um... And then he ends up uh, shooting, like through the rest of his shooting, I think this is pretty much combined, he did a single wound to that group of long beards there. Uh, the main thing that's making this more difficult is that the next unit over has the BSB in it, which has the banner that gives everything within, I think it's 6 or 12 inches, uh, a 4 or a f four or 5 up ward save versus shooting or magic missiles. Um but then the mortars start raining down on the undead. Um, the first one is a direct hit that blows up almost half of my skeletal warriors. Which, to be honest, I mean, it's good. He's, he's, he's thinning them down. But I'm really expecting the dwarves to do most of the heavy lifting as far as unit combats. And, and letting my terrorgeist and my general do most of the stuff over here. And then uh, all of his shooters over here opened up on the gyro bomber, and I think they did one wound to it total. Uh, the dwarf player was just really rolling armor saves like a boss, and uh, just re wasn't really enough to do any long-term damage there. So during combat, uh, the flagellates did flagellates, whatever they're called. Did a few wounds themselves, just enough to get, I think, the first bonus that they get off their chart. Um, but even with that, they didn't really have a great showing against the Terrorgeist. I think they did two two wounds. Uh, and I pretty much ate the whole back rank off of the Flagellate unit. Um, but it is going kind of slow. So what I'm thinking is next turn I'm going to charge the... Uh, Dire Wolves with Julian the Houndsmaster into the flank and just go ahead and finish them off. Um, and hopefully I can do that before his knight's night bus comes around and is ready to charge me. So we go into uh, turn two for the vampires, and Lord Alessandro and his mighty zombie dragon charge the captain on Pegasus, who is smart enough to realize that he wants none of that, and takes off running. Um, I had nobody else I could redirect to, really, that I wanted to get into, so I ended up there. Which I'm kind of kicking myself for, because I am way too close to that steam tank for comfort. Um, <laughs> now, over here is probably our first big coup of the game. Um, my Vargulf charges that unit of knights with a level 4 mage in it, and he fails his terror check. 
And they turn around, and on Swift Stride, I think he rolled a three. It was like either... It might have been two... Yeah. It was like two and a one. Um, and another one. So, uh, the Vargulf ended up catching him and running him down. Now, that pretty much means he's dead, because he's right in the sights of those demigriffs, but I'm willing to make that exchange. And over here, you see the horde of dwarves uh, fail to charge into that detachment on the side. But it actually turned out well, because he ended up going as far as he would have if he had just marched anyway. So, uh, really no harm, no foul there. Um, and, uh... <laughs> It's uh, it's not too bad because he's still he's got a good a decent charge. Uh, if he's if they're gonna counter charge, but then that failed charge was followed up by two that we were kind of hoping to get off. Um, my crypt horrors failed to charge into the other detachment, and my ghouls failed to charge into the halberdiers. And I knew the ghouls going into the halberdiers was gonna be basically a suicide play. But the idea was is that I didn't think he could kill all 30 of them at once, and that could give the dwarves time to chew up that right flank. But uh, now with neither of those things happening, uh, we're kind of split up pretty bad. And then over here during movement, the gyrocopter flies over the, uh, the halberdier unit, drops a pie plate on him, and I think kills one or two of the halberdiers. It's not very many at all. And over here you see the Longbeards moving up so that they can uh, try to rebuild our, our somewhat ragged line at this point. Um, with none of those charges landing, I think we were kind of worried that the Empire would be able to start breaking us up a little bit and, and chewing us up. Because that big horde of 50, whatever it is, halberdiers, is kind of hard to deal with if you're not focusing directly on it with multiple units. So here you can see that I did succeed the charge with the hounds and Julie and the hound master into the side of the flagellates. Um, and we just ate them up. I think we killed half the unit at this point. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this is the point where they were eliminated. But it was it's either this fight or the next next round where they just get finally ground down. Um, then over here, during shooting, the dwarves drop a stone thrower right on that free company detachment there and kill all but three of them. They fail their panic, but since Lord Alessandro and his, his zombie dragon are the closest unit, they actually flee through the halberdiers and end up, you can see them right at the base of the gyrobomber right there, so that was pretty excellent. Okay, I know what that last picture would with this area was that was the damage that the terror guy screamed in into the unit so he he took five or six off with the scream and then we tore them apart in combat and reformed like you see us right here so the flagellates are gone this turn and uh pretty much just in time to get ready for a charge from the knights but at least there's not enough room for them to squeeze in there so they're gonna have to go against the dogs and uh going into <laughs> Empire turn two, or turn three, I'm sorry. Uh, that's exactly what they do. They go straight in uh, to those dogs, and the way he set it up, uh, because of being blocked by the steam tank, if he kills them and overruns, he's going to clip the edge of the Terrorgeist and still be able to uh, handle both of them. So I'm hoping that Julian can hold out and do some damage in challenges. Um... And over here, he fails a charge against my ghouls with his big old brick of uh, the halberdiers. So, um, we're just all kind of failing pretty miserably here in the middle of the board. I think he rolled a three, um, so he was out short by a couple inches, which only makes the charges that are going to come next turn all the easier. And the one charge that he did get that no one was surprised at, the Demigriffs go into Var my Vargulf here. And, uh, yeah, that's that's a dead Vargulf. Um, it, it's a good piece, but without the ability to do its Thunder Stomp and uh, up against one-plus armor saves, it's just not going to be able to bring home the bacon on this one. So, so he's going to get torn apart. And his steam tank ends up falling like two inches short of slamming into the side 
of my lord and zombie dragon. Um, so he's going to get that close and basically just try and dump a cannonball right out the front of it and try and bounce through me. Um, which I'm very worried about. All my general has in terms of ward saves is a 4 up on his first hit. And the zombie dragon's just got 6 up regen. Uh, and over here he moves his hand gunners out of the way so that the great swords can come mix it up. Uh, he was, I guess he was hoping to wait for the hammerers to get around and present a, a, a good juicy flank, but uh, we're doing enough damage from him at range that, that the Empire realizes they need to start moving and start making some casualties here, um, or they're just going to get too far behind. And in shooting, uh, magic... I don't remember if he got... Oh, he tried Final Transmutation on the Dwarf Big Brick, and it got spell eatered. Um, and here he does successfully dump a cannonball out the front of the steam tank, and it bounces through the uh, zombie dragon, and inflicts no wounds on my lord who ward saves it, and only a single wound to the zombie dragon. So that was absolutely fantastic. Um, and then his other cannon manages to take out the organ gun that's over here. So... At this point, other than the uh, gyro bomber, the only war machine that we have on our side is the grudge thrower. And here you can see my black knights are still standing there because I was an idiot last turn and forgot to move them. So they're really just not going to come into much here. Um, and then he opens up with the hellfire or the hellblaster volley gun and ends up peeling off. I think it's seven or eight of the hammerer unit. Um, and this entire time, pretty much the whole game, he spends using all of those Hawkland long rifles trying to snipe the BSB out of the dwarf unit. But the BSB has got a 4-up ward save, and I think even he's got a 5-up armor save, uh, even after you factor in the armor-piercing nature of the bullets. So, And here, as you can pretty much see, uh, as predicted, the Vargulf just gets the living hell beaten out of him by the Demigriffs. I think I did one wound in return. It was really... I mean, even though I was outmatched, it was a very pathetic showing for the Vargulf. And so in close combat over here, um, Julian the Houndmaster does manage to murder uh, the general, General Nadine, in a... Uh, always strikes first beat down uh, during a challenge, but it, his death inspired his troops to murder enough dogs that the dogs and Julian uh, that were left just disintegrated into the wind, so I was not happy with that. So, uh, we go into vampires, Vampire Dwarf turn 3. Uh, I attempt to charge the uh, archers there. They flee. I attempt to redirect into the level 4 life mage, and he flees. Unfortunately, neither of them flee off the board, so they're sitting right there. Um, but on the plus side, the gyro bomber is going to charge that life mage as well and run him off the board. Um, and then we've got another turn of just absolutely failed charges. Uh, what we tried to do here was basically a cross-the-stream sort of thing, where the hammer is slammed into the halberdiers and my ghouls slam into that uh, detachment unit, and it just totally failed. So we're stuck here, basically leaving the uh, longbeards out. And here is where you see the gyrocopter chase the life mage off the board. And there's a little die marking where he is because uh, the Empire player has a nasty habit of elbowing gyro bombers off the table. So <laughs> um, we just put that marker there and we're going to remember that he's going to come back in a few minutes. And during normal movement, since the uh, knights didn't uh, overrun, they decided to reform, uh, I figured I would fly the terror geist around back here so that he can keep screaming into them in relative safety. Although what I didn't realize when I moved him here, and I, I just because I wasn't paying attention, he's got just a beautiful straight line shot from his cannon that's like in the middle third of the board. So that's not good. Um, 
and oh yeah, over here the the life mage or this is actually the metal mage uh, is hiding behind everything now, and we managed to drop a grudge thrower right on him but only managed to do a single wound, <laughs> which seems to be a, a, a pattern here between the two sides. Um, so we go into the uh, Empire's turn, and the Empire succeeds. The Detachments charge into the Hammerers, and the Halberdiers charge into the Ghouls. So, uh, yeah... It's not going to be a good day to be a ghoul. That's an awful lot of halberdiers that are about to come chopping my ass up. <laughs> um, and over here is just a better shot of where the uh, detachment ended up. Now, the worst part about this for the Empire player is the great swords over there failed their charge into the flank of the hammers. So they ended up in that water, which when we rolled for what the mysterious water was was Raging Torrent, so I think he lost two great swords to dangerous terrains from the failed charge, and he's going to have to charge through it again to get him out of there. So definitely not looking good for the great swords. Um, and over here, the steam tank generates steam and uses three steam points to ram into the flank of Lord Alessandro. Now, I'm staring down a D6 plus 3D3 impact hits, plus he has enough steam points because he generated five uh, for a decent breath weapon. So I'm thinking, just in combat res, he's going to end up making me crumble to death, so I'm really nervous here. Um, and his, uh, the archers rallied, and the witch hunter that's been hiding over there the whole time joins that unit so that he's not going to get sniped, I guess. Um, the Witch Hunter had declared Julian as his target, and Julian basically went ahead and got himself murdered anyway, so uh, there's not a whole lot that the Witch Hunter is going to be able to do at this point for, for the rest of the game. Um, and then we get into shooting, and the Hellblaster volley gun ends up just absolutely destroying this unit of Black Knights. Uh, I'm down to four now, which is uh, not good. And really, it makes this uh, this flank our weak flank. He needs to get those demigriffs up there and, and hurting something, because we've really got nothing left on this side of the board to be able to even deter that unit at all. And uh, you might notice that the Terrorgeist is gone. Um, as I said, I left just the absolute dream shot uh, for the cannon team. Uh, and it obliged me by shooting the Terrorgeist right in the face for six wounds. And uh, so that that's pretty much it for him. <laughs> so here we are after combat between the Detachment and the Hammers. And to no one's great surprise... The free company is butchered to a man um, without inflicting a single wound on the hammers, to my knowledge. No, I lie. They did do one wound to the uh, rune smith that's in there. <laughs> However, the halberdiers had a much, much better uh, time with it, as this is after Crumble. He ended up between combat and crumble, killed 20 ghouls, and I think I killed three halberdiers. It was really kind of pathetic. Um, I wasn't rolling well, and with them being only strength three, he had uh, like six up armor still, but he was just making it. And over here, the steam gun fails to do anything. Uh, it succeeds in doing no wounds whatsoever with its impact hits. Uh, I turn around, I inflict, uh, Lord Alessandro inflicts none on it, but the zombie dragon turns around and, like, tears it up for four wounds. Um, but, uh, it's unbreakable, so I'm kind of tied up there, but I turn to face. And then on our turn, um, I went ahead and charged my three remaining... Uh, Black Knights into the flank of this gunner unit, hoping that at very least I'll be able to 
claim a few points with them before they're just absolutely butchered. Um, but I figure three Black Knights should be able to handle ten handgunners pretty casually. And here comes the bad day for Empire. Uh, the Longbeards charge into the front of the Halberdiers. The Hammerer Horde charges into the flank of the Halberdier Horde. And uh, my you can see my Crypt Horrors, they uh, fail to charge at the Metal Mage that's there in the back. Um, so they ended up where they are uh, right there. And here our gyrocopter or gyro bomber comes back in to threaten the and this is yeah, he came in and dropped a bomb, did his movement and dropped a bomb on that little archer unit that was hiding the witch hunter and blew them up. There's only the witch hunter and two guys left, but they actually managed to stick it out because they are for some reason the bravest archers ever to be part of the empire. Um and over here, you just see where we're doing movement. I've got the uh, skeletons coming around, so if I need to, I'll be able to slam into the side of that uh, halberdier unit next turn. Although, realistically, I'd probably just be adding more combat res for the uh, uh, for the Empire, since we're already getting the benefit of being on the flank anyway. And over here, I just wanted to get those zombies the hell out of the way. It's only 20 of them. 20 zombies isn't strong enough to blow your nose. Um, so I just needed them the hell out of the way. And I lined up a uh, good run with the black coach uh, for when those ghouls die. And I think the black coach has been shot by war machines once and taken a wound, but he's powered up two or three points now, so he's not an insignificant threat. And, um, I do end up, ah, the only spell I cast all game, uh, my Vampire Lord does get Curse of Years off on the Knight unit here, and it costs them, I believe it's two Knights they ended up losing off the back of that unit. And so we go to close combat, and here the Black Knights, uh, beat the Hand Gunners, break them, chase them down, and run over that wall, and one of them dies from dangerous terrain from pursuing over the wall. <laughs> and here, the steam cannon, or steam tank, obviously is not going to do anything this round, because it doesn't have any steam points. And uh, Lord Alessandro just whiffs like crazy, but the zombie dragon, who is rapidly turning into my MVP, inflicts two more wounds upon the steam tank, so I've only got to go through, I think it's four more to, to get rid of him, and now he's in pretty big danger of misfiring uh, when stuff goes down. And, uh, as you can see, the, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the fight in the middle just absolutely destroys the halberdier unit. Uh, they break, no one chases them down, but because everything is lined up there, they end up bouncing through my skeletons, the zombie dragon, the uh, steam tank, and end up way over on the other side. Um, so, we go into Empire turn five, four or five, I lost count at this point, I'm sorry. Um, the great swords managed to succeed their check or their charge into the dwarves. I know it doesn't look like it, but we're not stacking things on top of each other. But they do lose two more great swords from the uh, dangerous terrain there. And then he tries to put five steam points, or I don't even know if it was five. I think it was only three steam points in the steam tank, and. Uh, blew it up. <laughs> um, and the steam tank explodes, does one wound to my general, one wound to his mount, and kills everything in the halberdier unit except for the warrior priest that was with them. So, he's still running there. Uh, the inner circle knights reform to stare at Lord Alessandro. And, uh, I, the way I'm reformed here, I actually don't think they can legally charge me, because 
Or maybe I would have to close the door. Yeah, I think that's what would end up happening. But, yeah, regardless, uh, that's where they reform. He's hoping he can get in there and, and with static combat res, do, the, do enough of the deed to destroy my lord. Um, and over here, we have... Uh, I don't even know what we have over here. Um, I think this is another uh, shot with the grudge thrower that did some damage to one of the cannons. And uh, looks like I just happened to catch it when he put the steam tank back down before he put it away. But no, the steam tank did not come back to life. Um, and over here you can see that the demigriffs... Uh, oh, here, I know what that is. He finally shot with his Hell Blaster and did a ridiculously stupid number of wounds to the uh, last remaining two Black Knights. So he claimed the points for those, even though there was... Well, I guess it was about all he could do with the Hell Blaster at this point. There's not a whole lot of things that aren't in combat. Um, and here, the... Gyro Bomber is still trying to fly around and blow up these last three guys relatively unsuccessfully. So, in close combat, the uh, Great Swords just have a terrible time of it. They manage to kill off the Runesmith uh, in a challenge, I believe, but uh, God, those hammers are hard to deal with. Um, yeah, the Great Swords are just slaughtered to a man by the hammers, which is pretty amazing when you consider they're attacking the rear and uh, the hammers are still just getting those two attacks each um so over here I charged the did they fail their terror test no okay I god I'm sorry I must have missed some pictures here uh, this is actually Vampire Dwarf turn 5. I charged my general into his uh, M or his knight unit, and we got into a fight, and I just absolutely brutalized his characters in there and uh, broke them and ran them off the table. So uh, It was this point that the Empire player surrendered, so here is really what the board looks like at the end of the game. And... Uh, yeah, by this point it was midnight or so, and we were tired. The, the Empire, the poor Empire player was a little overwhelmed to begin with, but uh, there's a, not an awful lot of Empire left on that board, so that's where we're left off at. The town courtyard was packed edge to edge with the men of Sigmar. They spoke in hushed whispers to one another as they waited, surrounded by dwarf warriors on all sides. Their attention was turned to the loud thud of a stone being dropped to the ground. On top of that stone stood the dwarf king who had ordered this assault. Agram looked over the crowd, his hands still gripping the mighty hammer of Odhain. Clearing his throat, he spoke. Human men of Sigmar, our grudge here is settled. We will have no more conflict with each other. But our mercy to this town comes as a price. The men looked at each other, obviously thankful no more battle would occur here, but equally concerned with what price would save them. This concern was answered when Ogrim sent his long beards into the crowd, holding a paper bound to stone. My Dawi, who now walk among you, hold conscription orders. Consider yourselves allies with us again. Your service will be against those who seek the extermination of all. Chaos. The king stepped off his oath stone and proceeded into the crowd, who gave him a wide berth. Do not fear me, human men. I do not accept fear but you will respect me. Now understand, none of what I have said here is voluntary for you. With that, Agram walked off, fading out of view in the sea of bearded faces. These last conflicts had cost him time, and had slowed him from aiding Clan Hammerfell. There would be no more interruptions, only war against the ensuing forces of chaos. If they wanted blood and skulls, he would give it to them, but it would be their own. Some days later, Lord Alessand Alessandro Mounthaven watched the combined force of men and dwarves leave Lodingsbrook, headed north into the mountains. He was pleased. 
Not only had these two foes been weakened against each other, but the bodies left behind in their conflict would allow him to increase his own force. As they left, little did they know, they left behind them a force more capable of evil than any they sought to battle. So, as you saw, we had a victory for the dwarves and the vampires, and uh, I wanted to change up something a little bit. This picture is actually drawn by my wife, who was in the other room overhearing the uh, game we were playing. So this is her uh, <laughs> uh, vision of the battle <laughs> without having actually seen it. So thought you guys would enjoy that. Um, all in all, I thought it was a fun game. I, I think the dwarf player had a, had a good time. Um, obviously, I don't think our, our empire player had much fun. Not really because he lost. But I think he's still pretty new to the hobby, and I think the the five, trying to juggle five thousand points plus playing against two other players was a little rough for him. So I don't think we're going to do this again in the near future, or at very least maybe switch it up a little bit and, and change who gets to be the 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 one with the larger force. But uh, game took a long time. It was like almost five hours uh, to get done, and for us that was pretty crazy, so we were all pretty beat by the, the end of it. Um, as far as what I liked in my list, um, the Terrorgeist is fun. Uh, I really got to learn how to play it, because I just, it got dead real fast. <laughs> um, of course, that may very well have been, because with 5,000 points, there wasn't really much it could hide behind uh, early on. Um, I love the Zombie Dragon and Lord Alessandro Mount Haven on top of it. Um, that's pretty awesome. I, I My whole take on this army is very feudal-esque, so I'm actually never going to field Lord Mount Haven unless he's mounted on something. So I have a version of him that's on, ho on the Nightmare, uh, which is normal cavalry. I have uh, just finished a... Uh, Abyssal Terror for him to ride, and then I have the uh, the Zombie Dragon, which, for those of you who, who notice, that is actually a very old dragon miniature um, that I've had. It, it is actually Games Workshop, but it's back from when I used to play in high school. I finally just put it on the right size base and uh, got a model for it. But um, I definitely enjoyed that. I thought he was dead a couple of times over, and, and he just kept coming back, and... and being awesome, so I gotta love that. Um, beyond that, though, I could have left the rest of my army at home, really. <laughs> they really didn't do much anything. Um, as far as my, my dwarf ally is concerned, by God, if you pack enough uh, hammers into a unit, they're damn near unstoppable without one of the, the horde destroyer spells. Um, just the, the, the two attacks each in it, it, that strength is just, it's hard to deal with, um, but, um, again, it, strange as it is, this dwarf player doesn't do very heavily into the War Machines, I think the only reason that he had as many as he had is that I recommended that he had some, he had the Grudge Thrower, because he was originally just going to do a cannon and an organ gun, but I figured with the Empire being such an infantry heavy army, the organ gun would be good. Um, as far as our Empire opponent, he had a lot of mages. Um, I mean, yeah, with his, he pretty much had the magic phase all to himself. Like I said, I got one spell off the entire game, and it was, uh, not all that effective and dispelled pretty much immediately the next turn, but, um, I almost think he might have had too many, and, and admittedly part of that was he's trying to fill out 5,000 points, and that's not easy. But, uh, he really just had way more mages than he was ever going to have spell or dice for. And I think that, in part, contributed to him feeling overwhelmed. But, all in all, um, it was a good game. It was a, a, something fun and different. 
and uh, kind of brings at least one part of the story to the close. Now that the uh, forces of Dwarven Clan Odheim have uh, arrived in the Grey Mountains with their new conscripts, uh, the the dwarves will actually be able to be brought into the, the major uh, story and, and hopefully help their cousins in Clan Hammerfell regain some of what is rightfully theirs. But uh, it's it's definitely fun. We're enjoying where the the uh, narrative is taking us, and uh, it's it's allowed for some fun games. And we're definitely going to keep doing it. So I hope you guys uh, all enjoy this. Please like, subscribe, comment on the video if you like. Um, and as sort of a last note, I would like to say thank you all. Uh, this past week, my channel hit 250 subscribers after only three months so uh, that was really a, a pretty big milestone um, I mean I know it's not a lot compared to some of the big guys who've been doing it for years but when you consider I just sat down here three months ago and started doing these to have 250 plus of you that find what I'm doing to be entertaining or, or informative or <laughs> um, and, and to get the positive feedback that we've gotten uh, I'm very thankful for that, and I just wanted to, to make sure that you guys know that we appreciate you watching, commenting, and continuing to support us, and uh, and continuing to support me in this channel. So, uh, uh, thanks again, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have another two or three of the Fluff Masters videos planned that I have pictures for. I've just got to actually write what I'm going to be saying. Um, about each army and we'll get those up shortly uh, now because of the size of this vi of this battle and how long it took there is not a second battle report for this week so this will have to tide you guys over for a while but I'm hoping to fill the blank spots like I said with the fluff masters videos and uh, we're aiming to actually have a team game next week so it should be another one one battle week but uh, Hopefully it'll be a good enough one to keep everyone entertained. So uh, thanks again, everybody, and we will catch you next time.